Okay. Are we good? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me to share my experiences and thoughts. And let me begin my speech with a story. On June the 16th, 2000, Zhao Xin, a female English lecturer of Beijing Technology and Business University, was arrested by the local public security officers when she did the Falun Gong exercises on the side of the road between the Purple Bamboo Convent Park and the National Library of China in Beijing. Three days later, being handcuffed and fettered with her fourth, fifth, and sixth cervical vertebrae being broken, a high paraplegia from her neck down, she was sent to hospital from the local detention center. What was her crime? Practicing Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a traditional Chinese meditation practice, also known as Falun Dafa. There are about 100 million practicer, uh, pr uh, practitioners dating back to 1999. In April 1999, Chinese Communist Party regime began stamping down this peaceful spiritual movement, thinking that Falun Gong may scramble with Chinese Communist Party regime for the minds of the masses. As soon as Zhao Xin was sent to the hospital, which is the main hospital that serves the detention center. Her trachea was cut out and a short plastic tube was put into it. Her mom and younger sister were told by a doctor that it would prevent the tracheal cartilage, the soft tube structure, from collapsing. But I think it was to seal Zhao Xin's lips. Soon, Bai Gang, deputy director of the detention center, visited Dr. Cao, who was responsible for Zhao Xin's treatment, and talked secretly with him for the entire afternoon. It was that night when Dr. Cao arranged for an injection of a known medicine into Zhao Xin. And then Zhao Xin had a high fever for three days, while white foam kept flow out of her mouth. Her mother and sister repeatedly wiped away the white foam with handkerchiefs, sobbing. After fever reduction, Zhao Xin lost her memory of the past. And six months later, Zhao Xin died with her mouth widely opened. Her mother and sister cried and held her jaw to close her mouth. Her mouth closed by hand and opened when let go, closed by hand, her mouth opened again, and again, and again. Her younger sister held Zhao Xin's jaw to, hold, to close her mouth and cried and said to her sister's face repeatedly, Sister, sister, I know you wanted to tell us something. Sister, sister, I know you wanted to tell us something. Gradually and finally, Zhao Xin closed her mouth. My name is Chao Yu. I'm a Falun Gong practitioner too. I experienced the above scene when I was 28 years old. My son was two years old then. My wife was just sentenced to prison for her demonstration of the Falun Gong banner on the Tiananmen restaurant, which is a symbol of the Chinese Communist Party regime's ruling power. It was her first sentence. I was just arrested twice for appealing for Falun Gong. I acted as a coordinator for our fellow practitioners who volunteered to take care of Zhao Xin. I was in fear of being arrested again. The condition in the detention center is just terrible. I don't want to be there once again. Being the, the coordinator still exposed me to unknown dangers. What if I were put into prison? My son is only two years old. He has lost his mother. But the coordinator is important. Although Zhao Xin was in high paraplegia, 
She, she still suffered from the pain she felt in her arms, although she, she, she cannot control her arms. She needed massages on her arms and sweat wept out from her body. Her mother and sister came to Beijing, the capital of China, from their hometown with Zhao Xin's father. Her father was struck down by lights cerebral hemorrhage, cerebral hemorrhage when, when he saw his beloved daughter's situation, and he had to come back. Her mother and sister stayed to take care of Zhao Xin, and they had just exhausted themselves. That is the first time I witnessed how women are much stronger than men in certain situations. I had to coordinate, to schedule, and make appointments for multiple volunteers to help Zhao Xin, and I even found my backup in case I was arrested. What I could do is not limited to being a coordinator. I graduated from the most prestigious university in China, just as MIT in the United States. I was one of a small number of people in China who knew how the internet ran, and one of very few who, who knew how to establish the encrypted communication channel by using the most advanced asymmetry encryption algorithm and tools. What should I do? If I chose to do nothing, everything may be okay, but for the rest of my life, I was not going to be able to fall asleep easily, and I'm not able to look straight into my son's eyes and explain the core values of Falun Gong, which I practice, truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. If I chose to do something, it was just a matter of time that I got arrested and no one knew what might happen after. When Zhao Xin's trachea was cut out, she was only able to sound <laughs> from here. I witnessed and I thought if the current situation was not exposed to the world, more and more people were going to suffer similar tragedies. I decided to do something. Since the result was inevitably being arrested, why should I restrain myself? First, I chose and trained a group of core team members. We together composed training materials, rented locations and health training. Personnel is the key factor. The Chinese Communist Party regime eradicates ideas different from theirs by erasing the physical existence of the carrier of the ideas. So ensuring the expertise spreads faster than the arrests is important. From June 2000 to August 2002, on the list of the most uh, on the list of those most wanted in China, I helped establishing encrypted communication channel between China and Western world, leading Western journalists to interview those victims tortured, raped, or robbed by Chinese Communist Party regime and or family members of those being killed. Those journalists include Ian Johnson, then worked for Wall Street Journal, and won Pulitzer Prize in 2001 for his reports on Falun Gong practitioners. Now he works for New York Times. Charles Hustler then worked for Associated Press. Uh, now he is the Wall Street Journal China Bureau Chief. John Pomfret then worked for Washington Post. Philip Penn then worked for the Washington Post. Now he is New York Times Beijing Bureau Chief. Nancy Hilton alias Isabel Hilton, then worked for Daily Telegraph. Before that, she was a journalist of The Guardian. She was appointed officer of the Order of the British, British Empire in 2009. Now she is a founder and editor of ChinaDialogue.net.
and journalists from New York Times, Times Magazine, APTV, APTV, and the name is now APTN, and provided information to other journalists from BBC and AFP through telephone. My job includes transferring charity money to persons needing it, including these victims' family members, training technicians of encrypted communication in China, establishing publishing center for producing Falun Gong flyers, and transferring information of the suppression of Falun Gong on the internet. In August 2002, I was arrested with my team members, including my wife, my schoolmates, and my colleagues. I was sentenced to prison for nine years, actually stayed in prison for nine and a half years. My wife combining twice imprisonment, nearly 11 years. The total imprisonment of my team members sums up to more than 50 years. In May 2013, I came to the United States and seek uh, asylum with my family. And the United States government granted green cards to us. We are, we are now applying for our citizenships. It makes it possible for us to practice freedom and justice in public affairs. When I came to the United States, I found the United States is facing, is facing the crisis that the media elites, political elites, financial elites, industries elites, educational system elites betray the fundamental values of the United States, and they benefit themselves at the cost of American people. Let's talk about media. Falun Gong is a religious group enduring the most severe persecution by Chinese Communist Party for the past 21 years. In China, some brave lawyers defend Falun Gong practitioners in the court, and thereafter, they would face the same degree of persecution as Falun Gong practitioners. In the article published in December the 12th, 2014, Voice of America, VOA, reported the persecution of a lawyer defending a Falun Gong practi practitioner who was referred to as a criminal defendant. While VOA clearly know he or she is a prisoner of conscience, exposing the lawyer to posture VOA's position to defend the practice of rule of law while concealing the information of Falun Gong to synchronize with the propaganda department of Chinese Communist Party regime, which hopes Falun Gong is mentioned as seldom as possible so the atrocities of Chinese Communist Party regime's persecution could be concealed. VOA is an accomplice of Chinese Communist Party regime. VOA is not alone. June 30th, 2016, Time Warner Cable removed New Tang Dynasty signal, which had been airing on channel 1414 for 10 years on Time Warner Cable in New York. The Chinese channel, based on New York, broadcasts programs criticizing the ruling Chinese Communist Party. Because of its non-corrupted reporting, the channel has gained huge popularity among Chinese citizens who wanted to know what is really happen happening in China. Apart from NTD, Time Warner Cable also airs 16 other Chinese channels, but all of them have, his or have this or that relationship with Chinese Communist Party regime. Besides VOA and Time Warner, almost all top news agencies have compromised their fundamental responsibility to convey truth to the American people. In the current pandemic, we all know that it, it is extremely important for us to be able to hear truth, especially the real information about China. To control people's information is to control whether they live or die. When we're talking about media, we have to mention Google, Facebook, and Twitter. They are the huge hubs of information. Media is one facet of the functions of these big techs. They play a much worse role than, tradi than the traditional news agencies by suppressing 
the conservative voices such as Prager Yu, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, while synchronizing with the propaganda from Chinese Communist Party regime. Speaking of Google, what I'm going to draw your attention to is that the big, big techs such as Google, IBM, Cisco, Microsoft, and many other top American big techs helped Chinese Communist Party regime stamp down Chinese people domestically and acquire the advantage over the, the United States. Google developed a censored version of search engine for Chinese Communist Party regime by code name Dragonfly, which means the Red Dragon Chinese Communist Party regime will fly one day. Just after Google's AI center, artificial intelligence center, was launched, was launched in China in June the 1st, 2018, six months later, Google has decided not to renew its contract of artificial intelligence project Maven through March 2019 for Department of Defense program. And in October 2018, Google dropped out of the running of Jedi, the massive defense department cloud computing contract potentially worth 10 billion US dollar. Even you give me 10 billion US dollar, I will not serve you because you are the Department of Defense of America. They, 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 don't, they don't serve the United States. They serve Chinese Communist Party regime. And let's talk, talk about financial se sector. In the financial sector, there are more than 650 enterprises in US, US capital markets today that are Chinese. 86 in the, in the New York Stock Exchange, 62 in NASDAQ, and over 500 in the over-the-counter market, which is the least regulated and the most popular for those seeking to skirt transparency and disclosure requirements. Many of them are state-run companies or have military backgrounds. It is not tens of millions of dollars. It is nearly $1 trillion from 180 million to 200 million American investors. These American investors are supporting the national security abusers as well as human rights abusers. Let us, let us take a look at California as an example. Ben Meng is the chief investment officer of the California Public Employees Retirement System, California PERS, CalPERS. CalPERS is one of the country's largest pension funds that manages more than $350 billion for public employees either retired from or currently working for most, uh, most of the state and local public agencies in California. The Chinese state-run propaganda device, People's Daily, quoted Mr. Meng's pledged allegiance to his motherland. He was referring to the communist China. Meng was born and raised in communist China and came to the United States to study at the University of California, Davis, in 1995. Prior to his position at CalPERS, Meng served at the Deputy Chief Investment Officer at the State Administration of Foreign Exchange of China, SAFE, for three years. SAFE is a Chinese administra administrative agency under the State Council tasked with drafting rules and regulations governing foreign exchange market activities and managing the state's foreign exchange reserves, just like FED in, in United States. These reserves, held by the People's Bank of China, stood at more than $3 trillion at the end of December 2016. Tightly controlled by the regime, China's foreign reserve system is one of the key institutions of the world's second largest economy. Can we imagine that a high-ranked Nazi financial officer serving the U.S. government 
in the World War II? What if 12%, 15%, 17% of the American retirement portfolios are Chinese securities? American people use their retirement pensions to support the Chinese Communist Party regime, the arch enemy of America. This relationship goes both ways. The days that investors earn 7% in U.S. bonds are long gone. It is the result and the reason at the same time of the investment to nations outside of the United States. In a decade-long, low-rate environment, from university endowments to government pension funds, institutional investors have been challenged to achieve decent returns, returns uh, through a large allocation to the U.S. bond markets. This investment community sought after similar approaches to deal with the changing landscape. It unanimously increased riskier asset class investments such as emerging markets and private equity. This demand increase for riskier assets include, include, induced many beneficiaries. China, in particular, attracts attention. The sheer size of its economy, the rosy prospect for its future growth, especially against the memory of the 2008 financial crisis when China shined as the only bright spot in the world econo economic landscape, all makes China a perfect candidate for an investment community desperately seeking the next chapter for growth. Major Wall Street investment banks such as Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, JP Morgan Chase, Blackstone, etc., all have significant investment in China. Major American corporations such as Apple, Walmart, Boeing, Intel, Qualcomm have all made great fortune in China. A large number of family members of top communist cadres work for these companies. And these red families with great wealth also have immense investment in the, in the American stock market. The relationship between Wall Street and the commun communist regime cost the security and future of the United States. How does the United States get along with China to the edge of the cliff? It dates back to 40 years ago. On December 15, 1978, the United States established diplomatic relations with communist China under the consideration of leveraging China to restrain the Soviet Union. It is understandable to choose the lesser of two evils. On June the 4th, 1989, the Tiananmen massacre happened. In the month after the crackdown, then President George H. W. Bush sent Deputy Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger and the White House Security Advisor General Brent Scowcroft to Beijing to guarantee Xiaoping Deng, the Chinese Communist Party regime's leader and the murderer of the Tiananmen massacre, that America will maintain the relationship and will leave the condemnation rhetorics on the surface to save America's face. Three years later, the United States turned on the green light for the communist China to usher them in the world market. On October the 10th, 1992, the United States and Communist China signed the Memorandum of Understanding that commits China to open its market to the United States exports. In return, the United States is committed to supporting China's accession to the World Trade Organization, WTO, which began a 30-year journey of the decline of the United States, the nightmare of the middle class, and the corrupt elites groups eroded by communist China while betraying the United States. December the 11th, 2001, communist China be became a member of the World Trade Organization. Americans' investment pours into China, and the cheap Chinese products manufactured by enslaved Chinese people 
pour into America's market and the world's market. Investment out and products in means American labor being replaced by Chinese slaves. The American people are abandoned. The American elites held a notion which has been proved to be disastrously wrong. Helping communist China achieve economic prosperity, the middle class in China will grow, will grow, and the transition of the political institution will happen naturally. The United States has been feeding and bringing up the opponent which can use Wuhan virus, the manufactured fatal bioweapon, to destroy the, the United States. The essence of this story is that one cannot partner with the regime ideologically against God. You cannot transact with a regime of thugs and criminals who treats the enslaved people as animals. When enjoying the cheap products from that evil regime, you are abandoning the fundamental understanding of human beings. Those who pay the cost are not only Chinese people, but also American people, even American president. From the nationwide unemployment to the Wuhan virus victims, from the community collapse of the Rust Belt to the opiate crisis, from fake news, censorship on PragerU and other conservative media to suppressing President Trump's tweets, what happened to us is gradually happening to you too. Look at the riots that began in Minneapolis and spread all around America. It is American version of the Cultural Revolution which happened in China in, in the 1960s. Riots spreading all around the United States with variants of communism ideology targets to the election of November. Five days ago, in June 15th, the United States has been hit by a large-scale DDoS attack, distributed, distributed denial of service attack, T-Mobile, Fortnite, Instagram, Comcast, and Chase Bank have all experienced outages. This time, the target is the communication infrastructure. Next time, the targets would be the electricity power plant and infrastructure and the water plant. Attacks are from within and outside. And the enemy is the Chinese Communist Party regime. The United States is the only outpost in the world that freedom can flourish. If the United States fell down, the war would collapse into darkness. What, would we do, what do we do in regards to the current situation? Call robber, robber. Call thief, thief. Call evil, evil. In recent riots all around the United States, not many senators or representatives call them rioters. Senator Marsha Blackburn, Senator Tom Cotton, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Ted Cruz, Senator George Hawley do so. Others? I don't know. In this historical turning point, self-reflection is critical. We have to identify those values we live upon, which define who we are. In this historical turning point, the belief in God is vital. It is the very reason for today's situation that people have been deviating from God's words for so long. I'm not a Christian. I have my belief system, but I admire your God. I know without the nation and the institutions based on the Greco-Roman culture and Judeo-Christian belief, people were devouring each other, which, which is going to happen, or even is happening, if we do not take right actions. I came to the United States because I defended the dignity of human beings. I would like to fight with you side by side for our common future. I would like to fight with you side by side for God. Thank you. God bless America.
Thank you.